<sighs> yeah. Oh! oh! I see you. <laughs> that looks great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Do we have any front lighting on you? There we go. Got for all oh, now we see you. Hi brother, how you doing? Good, how you doing? Fabulous now that we've got this part of it going. Now the fun part is. Woo. All right. On my end. Okay, and this. All right, good. I got that setting already. Okay, now they might see you before they see me, so I'll let you know because I have I have multi windows I have to close to get back to where I am right now. So okay. live. Okay, hold on. Now I gotta go to Facebook's reader. And we are going there. I guess we're going live in a few seconds and uh, hold on oops um Okay, and then we go live and teach more people by adding a title. Go live anyways. And we're live. Hold on. Okay. And then... How are you doing? Hold on in five, four, three, two, one. Hi, we are live with Arizona Wildcraft Entertainment. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm sorry we were running really about 30 minutes late, but uh, technical issues, you know, it's a crisis. So I want to introduce you to my good friend, Emmanuel Russell. He's an amazing producer director. Let him tell you all about it. Hey, how you doing? Thanks yeah. for having me. Thank you for coming. I love your background. It's really awesome. Oh, you're already getting hits already. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you start? Well, uh, again, my name is uh, Russ Emanuel. I, um, I, I guess in the background here, you see my film. So, um, this is actually the first time I'm using Zoom. So it's kind of new for me. <laughs> this is very um, cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's very it's very interesting. I've I've been hearing about oh, the Zoom thing, you know, since the, this pandemic has started. This is a a great way to still converse, I guess. Yes. Do business meetings and even like personal meetings. So you know, it's it's, it's very interesting. So I think I'm going to be using this more often. I hope I so. All the tech kinks, you know. Um, as for my films, uh, so basically, um, I guess my background. Okay, so I, I went to uh, the University of Southern California. I went to USC. So okay. I was part of the cinema school there. Uh, I also took uh, extension courses at UCLA. And um, while I was there, I met my uh, filmmaking partner. His name is Emil Harris. And wow. basically... Emil and I have been making films since about 2002. And we did a short film called Girl with Gun um, back in 2004. And that film garnered a lot of attention. So where can we uh, see that? Yeah, you can actually see that on IMDb. So you go to my uh, IMDb page or just look up Girl with Gun on IMDb. It's there. So you can see it. It's um, Great. 15 minutes, I think. 
That's great. Uh, it's an action film. It has a superhero assassin. It's pretty cool. We actually even, um, for her um, upper outfit, mm -hmm. we used the uh, leather jacket that was wore, worn by uh, Uma Thurman and the Avengers. <gasps> not the Avengers, not the one that everybody knows of. Yes. Not last year, but the one from the 90s. Yes, I actually um, remember that one. Yeah, so we and we got it from the Warner Brothers uh, costume department, and wow, we, we rented it, you know. But if we had damaged it, we would have had to spend like three thousand bucks. <laughs> so it's wow. kind of like we didn't damage it, but th thankfully, but yeah, that was a very interesting experience. So because of that, uh, we got into places like Comic Con, like the San Diego Comic Con, and um, you know, back then there were like fifty thousand people coming. Now it's like, what, 500,000 or a million? Yeah. I don't know. Um, unfortunately, it's canceled this year, of course. Most of all our festivals here have been canceled too. Unless we can figure out another way like this to do it. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, that's going to be the new norm for at least. For a while. Yeah. You know, you can run videos and other things through Zoom like this like what we're doing right now. So you should definitely look in into it uh, and showing off some of your stuff. And uh, I know I'm going to have you back on our show here too. So. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, it was a pleasure to meet you. Uh, was it last year? Was yep. Last year. last year at the Phoenix. Uh, oh, was what was Chandler? that? Was it the Chandler Film it's Festival thing? And yes. For yeah. uh, this film. Yes. Which is The Assassin's Apprentice. Yes. Yeah, you know, and where can you cool. see that? Oh, don't forget to let our, our viewers know about your website and where other places we can see your fabulous okay. films. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, thank you for those kind words. <laughs> um, so because of Girl with Gun, um, it got the attention of my uh, now producer of my feature films, Howard Nash. And, you know, basically he liked it. And because of that, we've done five feature films together. The first one's called PJ, which is also called Heaven's Messenger. Okay. And this was back in, I guess, 2006. And my lead actor was the late John Hurd, who was the Home Alone oh. dad. And it was, it was very sad when he died, uh, which was in you know, 2017. Mm -hmm. um, but he was my lead actor. And I have, at that point, only done two short films and I was going to direct him in a lead role and had ca a cast like Vincent Pastore of The Sopranos, Glynis O'Connor, oh, Eddie wow. Malabarca, Robert Picardo, Robert Picardo of Star Trek, who I've worked with um, six times now, I think, or five or six times. So this is the first time I'm working with this, you know, stellar cast. Amazing. And it was a trial by fire we shot in New York. I live in Los Angeles, technically Huntington Beach, but I guess it's Los Angeles. Um, and it, it just, um, it was, we shot for like 17 days. We shot during the winter. And fortunately for me, now I'm from LA, like I said, so it got to, uh, we did a night shoot, I think on the first or second day, mm -hmm. and it got to a chilly 43 degrees. Wow. Now, the crew over there were laughing at me. They're like, that's not cold. I'm like, well, I'm freezing. And lo and behold, like two days after the shoot, it became 20. <laughs> then I realized, okay, yeah, that wasn't cold. <laughs> <laughs> when, it, when, it, when, it's, when it's in the 20s, you know, it's very, very cold. So yeah. And your teeth are was, chattering and you're, it's really hard to work when you're Da, 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 da. Now, now I know you in Arizona. You know, you know this uh -huh. nice and chilly twenty degree weather. But yeah. <laughs> really, we're at about eighty five today. It was actually I broke a sweat outside. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Well, it's about you know it's about seventies here. Um, you know here. How the, is it there in right. LA? By the way, is it crazy? Is every how is going to the grocery store? That would be a great, fascinating thing. You know, I'm curious to hear your stories, but my story is um, they have um, they tape signs to the um, to the floor, and you have to stay six feet six. apart. Yep. So if you yep. have a car, shopping cart or just, you know, you, you have your own you know, recyclable bag or whatever, they, they show you where to stand. Yeah. You know, so that you're six feet, you know, 
uh, from each customer that's in the line. And there is a line, you know, and because it's six feet apart, the line is like really long. Um, and you, Are know, you wearing I mean, masks and smooth. gloves there? You got it. Yeah. You got it. You know, I got designer face masks now. They go from here all the way down. It's very nice. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. It's yeah, mine, you know, I should get something like that. Mine right now is black on both sides. And I can't tell which is the inside and which is the outside. Because again, it's completely uniform. So I'm like, okay, am I putting on this way now or this way or inverted and this way? I don't know. So yeah. But it's a cool looking mask. It's just, you can't tell if it's on the outside or the inside. You look gangsta now, okay? <laughs> yeah. It was funny. I was taking a walk and I had the mask on and the lady is, are you okay? Are you sure you can't, you can breathe? I'm like, not really, because it's like, it's stuck on my face. Like, like this. So, oh yeah, that's, you know, but we, we have to follow protocol and here in California. You got to do with what you got to do. See here for me, I'm riding motorcycles and it's always dusty. So the face masks we have are like long tubes. It's right. like a turtleneck that you just pull over your face. And we all have them here because most of us either that ride horses or that ride motorcycles, we're already kind of prepared. <laughs> and I had a lot of TP. You know, every time I think of Arizona, by the way, I had my grandparents before they passed. They lived in Sun City. So I have been to Arizona. So trust me, I'm not, I'm not you know, I'm not a novice when it comes to Arizona. But when I think of Arizona, I always think of the old West Coast. Wow. You know, what was like in the old West kind of thing. You know, you know, people riding the horses, as you were saying, but with, you know, dirt roads and all that. Well, I was in a plethora of uh, Westerns as I was growing up. That's the only thing I could get cast in. The funny thing is I was always playing an Indian girl of sorts. So, um, you know, went from uh, <laughs> one of my favorite ones was Posse that I was in here. And Mario Van Peoples turned a, a great turn on the Westerns with the Buffalo Soldiers. And I think, I think that was one of the best things that I love looking back at because it's always being played at Black History Month. So I find that to have been a great honor, you know. Hollywood, when it came to Hollywood, the black folk welcomed me with open arms. So I went from one to another to another, you know. It's like a family, you know how it is. So it's yeah, like you yeah, it one person and well, then you go to the next. Well, I'm, I'm very intrigued by Westerns and that's a genre I would love to tackle. Okay, well then I'd love to film in Arizona. No, I've, uh, I'm watching Westworld right now. <gasps> I know! I'm on third season. I'm just starting. Uh, I'm on. I'm on. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I'm only on the second season. But now Dolores is a. She's a. Can I? Can I semi swear? On this show? <laughs> yes, you can swear on my show. Yeah, she's a badass. There you go. Yes. Yes, she semi -swear. is. Semi swear. I love but, the fact yeah. that it was filmed at the Warner Ranch. That's yeah, the but. only thing that did not get touched by the fire last year. Yeah. And the, oh yeah. The south side was completely destroyed, and I had. I actually had filmed there a very, 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 very bad TV show called uh, The Army Show. But the best thing about The Army Show is Jim Neighbors in Variety Magazine said, golly, this show sucks. <laughs> well, well, Sorry, I took that as a compliment. <laughs> that, that, uh, that's, that's a very <laughs> memorable <laughs> quote. <laughs> Oh yeah, but the thing is, is that we were next to ER, so I didn't care. I saw George Clooney every day and played a little round of basketball every once in a while. But that, uh, that was a, better. <laughs> uh, that's funny. You, that's funny. Well, Hollywood is funny. You go from, you know, being dressed up and then you're in fatigues the next minute. And then the next minute I'm swinging from a trapeze on a green screen. So, you know, as... The life of an actress, it was really fun because I actually wanted to do more creature feature stuff. I was always good in the horror department. Died in Angel as a human, came back in Buffy as a vamp, I mean, in, in Angel as a vampire. So, hey, and then I got killed again. So, you know, I really preferred, <laughs> I like horror films, I like sci-fi. And 
to learn how to do the green screen, green screen work back in those days and how it's changed since 20 years from then and now. Yeah. It's quite fascinating. And we even have green screen right now. It's all about ratios. I, you know, this Zoom technology is 20 years ago wouldn't have existed, that's for sure. You know? I know. Well, I exactly, you know. And they, they upgraded due to the coronavirus in February. They got smart and upgraded their systems so they could go live on Facebook, YouTube, and another platform I'm not even familiar with. <laughs> I didn't know that. I thought Zoom was its own. I, I didn't know it was connected. So well, there you go. Well, it I'm can be gun. connected. It, that's the oh, thing. Okay. Uh, because I'm also a techie, I also have a router box and other things around me, you know, lavalier and, you know, all the good lighting. So it's a, it's a still the same process, but at least I miss my crew, but you know, tripods and are good for now. I can do my own makeup. <laughs> that's the, <laughs> well, that's a, yeah, you look great. I mean, look, I mean, it's a, this is what everybody's doing now, you know, on the news. This is exactly. And even some of our news people are forgetting to wear makeup and forgetting that they have a lavalier somewhere in their car, but they forgot to what it was. It's in a box somewhere in your car. And I know your sound engineer gave it to you, but you forgot what it looks like. That's funny. It That's is. Hilarious. And, and I, I'm seeing a lot of it. And I think everybody should step up an edge. Even you, darling, because you're yeah. a fabulous director and you've got amazing things going on. And see, Chasing the Green was one of my favorites, too. So well, I really you. enjoyed that film. So you have a lot. What, what I should ask you, what do you have going on if the coronavirus wasn't currently in the situation? Well, right now we're in um, heavy post-production on this film's sequel. So it's called The Assassin's Apprentice 2, The Civil Doors of uh, the Canary Islands. And fortunately for us, uh, we, we filmed last year and we actually did some uh, location filming in the Canary Islands. I mean, Canary Islands, by the way, wow. which I never knew about before we actually went there. So uh, it's in Spain, but it, it's, it's like a territory of Spain or islands. Like, it's like the Hawaii of Spain, you know? So it's actually off the coast of North Africa. How was that filming there? Oh, it was, it was great. In fact, I mean, we the, found, the okay, people. so just FYI, the, the mastermind of the Assassin's Apprentice one and two is Paul Hickman. And Paul Hickman is this, you know, he's, he's a wonderful human being. And, you know, he was kind enough to hire me. I was hired. You know, I didn't write it. I didn't produce it. I don't produce, you know, I, I direct. That's what I do. So and you know what? I, I was what you do grateful to be hired. Well. Oh, I'm sorry. What was that? I said, and you do it well. That's why oh, people well. hire you. I, I I hope so. Yeah, I hope people like what I do. You know, I'm in. I I'm my own worst critic. So, uh, but with Assassin's Apprentice two, um, so we did an Indiegogo and Kickstarter campaign. Yes, I remember that. I put a couple dollars down on that. Oh, so you are Team Assassins. I love it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Team Assassins, too. <laughs> I, I, that's I what I did in the video like that. I blasted <laughs> out there to air all my folks, and I shared it to everybody. So that's the how we make films today, because I've got four projects going on right now, and, you know, that's the way it goes. You know, I'm writing, producing, and directing myself, and acting, but... Um, the great thing is, is my partner, we switch off. So I don't have all the challenging all at once. I can be the actor when I need to be. I can be the director when I need to be. And that's the great thing about our world is we find a way to do it. Because right yeah. now I'm still working with my location managers via Zoom. And I'm going to have them on here too. We're going to discuss how we can continue business and our tourism here in Arizona while the crisis is in effect. So we have right. a lot of things that we're going on here too. But I also wanted to know, because 
this week I'm reaching out to my LA folks and you're my first LA folk uh, that I have reached out to. Um, Thank you. But I'm gonna try to do one a day. Uh, tomorrow we have uh, a really great stunt man and uh, so on, so on down the list. Abraham Justice is gonna be joining us tomorrow. Everybody better check out tomorrow at six o'clock because Abraham Justice will be here. So today I want to finish up here with, uh, oh, you're so amazing, Russell. Tell me about more what you got going on. <laughs> okay. So, you know, this is a shameless plug and sorry for doing it, but uh, no. I have to put it out Be there. thankful. Uh, I am very thankful. Trust me. Trust me. I'm very thankful where I am today. Um, so right now, uh, I was mentioning Howard Nash, the producer of my features, right? So the latest one is called American Whisper. And American Whisper is on sites like Tubi TV, that's uh, T-U-B-I TV. And you can see it for free. Um, just type in American Whisper, Whisper there, or you even type in my name, Russ Emanuel, and then um, three of my features will come up. Um, and Occupants is another one. Occupants is actually probably my biggest film, at least the one that's, you know, got a lot of accolades. And another friend of mine was in that with you too, uh, Eugene Glenn. Yeah, no, no, Eugene is uh, somebody uh, uh, that I would um, cast in a heartbeat because he's like, uh, what was it uh, called? The Martian Man? Remember that Ray Bradbury? Yes. Yeah, the yes. Illustrated Man, that's it. Yes. The Illustrated Man. So I, I actually, I, I, I actually, told him that I'm like you look like the illustrated man and he does he's tattooed everywhere yeah you know, and he's in gotta, our too he's that's gotta hurt to be tattooed on your face like that that's a spiritual <laughs> thing for uh eugene he right. every i did a documentary with him and he told me about every little bit of ink on his body and what it meant and other ink that was hiding other tattoos and it was kind of like a seek and find trying to find the old tattoo that was still under there but he's an amazing man an amazing actor and we're gonna he's gonna be on our show soon too so you'll have to check out that this, he has this really unique look you know he does and yeah. he's an amazing man to work with after yeah. 16 hours a day working with someone you want someone that will still put a smile on your face and still scare the shit out of you too and he will. He's, I, I, you know, I, I, I kind of half joke with him. He'd make a good romantic lead. I keep saying that. To him. I, you know what? I put him in a nice suit. He dresses up very nicely. He, he's he, a, can, he's, a very, he's nice guy. very versatile. And you know, the great thing is, is gonna, he's gonna be playing a demon, and multiple versions of demons, in this yeah. next film with me. So, you're gonna see his much more of his amazing acting ability. He's going to be a hot ticket if we ever get out of this coronavirus. Oh, by the way, I wanted to mention to you, since you are in our business, we, as in my folks down here, uh, due to the coronavirus, we are uh, redoing table reads by Zoom. Nice. So everybody's still keeping it sharp. So when we do film, Everybody has their lines down, they've got their, and we change things. And that's the great thing. Cause as you know, every good table read, you discover, oh, I don't like that. Oh, I love that. We want to expand more with that. And that's the great thing about Zoom right now is even though with things down, I had talked with SAG and SAG said, uh, the website for SAG production is up and running. So if you're currently wanting to do a SAG production, get your paperwork done. It's, this is the time to do it because they give you all these wonderful freebies and resource things now, even more so than before. So yeah. take advantage of the great opportunities we do have. Uh, SAG Foundation right now is borrowing our wonderful mainstream actors and doing storytelling. So every night, one wonderful mainstream actor is reading a wonderful book to everyone that wants to chime in. Yeah, I think Patrick Stewart did that. Yes, he did. I love it when he does that. 
Yeah, I do too. And you are, as we were talking off the air, you're watching Star Trek Picard. Yes, Borgs! No! Okay, that's all the way I'm going to give away for that one. But I was lucky enough to know his son uh, when he was uh, going to Occidental College. So I got to firsthand see him back in the days when I was too young. <laughs> to, it, it was way before. What are you talking about? You were young. Oh, if you only knew. <laughs> see, oh, Asian, we Asian, we ageless forever. And then come 90 years old and we age overnight. Then we age overnight and then we look scary, you know, and then we're perfect. Then you, for then, then you turn into uh, the villain of The Last Crusade, Indiana Jones, where he drank from the wrong cup of Christ. Exactly. So he ages in like five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically my mother. She says, Leela, I had black hair before last month. Now I got white hair. Oh, shut up. You're 82. You should be happy that you still have hair. Half of my friends don't have hair. So it's a yeah, good thing. Yeah, I, I think we should be thankful for what we have. Personally, I am a person of optimism. So every day I try to put something happy out there. There's so much hatred and cruelty and meanness right now in the, when you go to the store, when you go outside to, with your children, people look at you funny. So, you know, time have changed. And in this kind of time, we need more people, good storytellers, people that have a positive smile on their face. And I'd love to work with you someday because you would look like you would be fun after a 16 hour days and we're sleeping on the floor, you know? Well, I, I tend to, uh, people call me uh, a goofball. <laughs> uh, and I could be very, very energetic. Well, like, you were definitely energetic and fun to be around. So be careful what you ask for. You may get it. <laughs> oh, lucky me. I get to work with the wrestler. Imagine. Oh, I, I got the vapors. Oh, no. Uh, no, no. I think you'll be doing more of a Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> Okay, then. You work with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm definitely, Eugene and I, we have the def, definitely the perspective of keep it real and keep it happy. That gentleman right now, I want to give out a huge shout out. He's working in the prison system right now. And on a daily, I mean, my brother wants to cry to me because it's so sad. They're not treating our prisoners well. I don't think in any regard. So, and I'm pushing right now, Doug Ducey, hazard pay. Christian Cinema, I know you're watching, girlfriend. McSally, hazard pay for people that really have to be out there right now. They need a little more. Yes? And in no. your world, how is that in your world? Is everything shut down? Uh, in California? Yeah. Or in LA? Yeah, in LA. I uh, yeah, you know, I meant um, only essential services are open. I mean that that includes like restaurants, you know, because we still need to eat, right? Grocery stores. Well, most people in LA can't cook. Okay, they like I, I, cooking I, shows. I friend, I'm sorry, what was that? LA people like to watch cooking shows. They don't like to cook. We go to Mexicali. Remember? Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I I, I have been trying to cook some stuff at home lately you know because what else can you do you know i mean thank you again for having me on the show because other than this you know my you know my films are in publicity right now or in post-production but as you were saying filming filming is it's it's gone it, it doesn't exist here well sag is going to allow us to do certain things as we move forward as long as we keep caution you know masks and gloves, hand sanitizer, um, makeup people uh, do one-on-ones, and even on screen, they're wanting us to keep six inch, I mean, six feet apart when doing scenes. So right now we're thinking of how to choreograph how to do scenes. <laughs> so, and still stay under the union specs because we don't want to break our union laws because they're giving us 
so many wonderful things this year. So I'm, I'm and so the, proud of my SAG buddies and my fellow members. Well, I mean, it's like here and, you know, SAG is, is wonderful. So, so a lot of unions are, all of them, you know, are essential. Um, Media number one. It's put it this way, like, we, we can't even get permits right now from Film LA. Oh. Uh, which means legally you cannot film, you know, you, because you don't have a permit. To film. Yeah, see, that's why we're taking the initiative by here. Uh, I was talking with uh, Peter and Laura, our film commissioners here, Tucson yeah. Film Commission and uh, Marana, because we have, uh, I filled out my permit information and they left an open date. So that's the good thing about, we want to get up back and rolling because several films are, I hate to say it, but a lot of independent films did not go down due to the coronavirus. They still kept on shooting. Uh, and regardless of health. You can, you can do that there in Arizona? Uh, no, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> but they do anyways. Okay. <laughs> I was called to take care. We weren't of having this conversation. <laughs> yeah, I was called to take care of an issue during the, when it all launched off. And uh, right now we all have to do our part and stay apart. We have to take the initiative because we're entertainers. And as, as such, we have the responsibilities to help others laugh, help others do the right thing stay informed we are the only ones that they are looking for us now and right now look at next year there's not going to be anything on the tv set that's new and that's you know i think this is reminiscent oh but, but before that you and i are entertainers so we entertain you know whether it's a horror film a comedy rom-com you name it the whole point is to entertain you know Exactly. And I think during this time, I'm, I'm segueing a little, but you know, this is a good, you can't really do anything. So what do you do? You watch TV, you watch films on your I TV. I say better screen, yourself. TV screen. I mean, it's just, or, you know, you could even read a book. <laughs> better yourself. That's all I can say. Yeah, but, but Take I, the time as a long vacation and better yourself. But our job is to entertain. You yes. know, just to make sure that if, if you're feeling bored or, you know, you just want to escape, then our job is to hopefully entertain whoever is going to watch our stuff, right? Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I, I would love it. I, I mean, I, I you were saying how there everything has ground to a halt. So it kind of reminded me of one of the Writers Guild strikes, you know, like in 19... Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, and you cannot they can't write and uh, I remember I was watching season two of the Star Trek The Next Generation when the Writers Guild strike struck back in 1988 and if you look at season two the episodes it, they were kind of weak you know mm -hmm. because they couldn't do anything you know they once the, the strike happened they had to legally stop right you know the writers who were part of the WGA so you're right who knows you know I, I don't know what what the creative output will be in two, uh, 2021 I don't know well, but it won't be what it is in, you know, 2019, that's for sure. Well, as such, I see more movies going on the platform of YouTube, more movies going on the platform of streaming because everything is going streaming and you have yeah. more control over that when you're the the controller of how it gets out there. YouTube has yeah. become the new platform for everybody to put their stuff as a library on so they can always be watched. I, I'll tell you this. Um, I, I think the COVID-19 pandemic may have accelerated this trend in that all the movie theaters, they're closed. I know, the and some of them are closing, closing. As in they, they, but because what, what can they do? You know, because they have to file for bankruptcy because yes. nobody's going. And this is happening with gyms. I just found out 24 Hour Fitness, uh, which I use, is contemplating filing for bankruptcy. Wow. So this could be the new norm when it comes to films, uh, that streaming is the way to do it. Because yes. uh, I, I think films, like the last 
film I saw in the theater. What was it? Was it The Invisible Man? You know the the new one. Oh the- yeah, I'm I'm holding out because every time I want to watch it, my family wants to do Family Hour, and I'm like, no, this is not a family <laughs> film. I'm watching. Watch it. Yeah, it's not. But you my daughter watch. always wants to come and watch when I'm wanting to watch a horror film, like Annabelle. She wants to sneak out of her room and wants to watch it with me. And I'm like, no, darling. Yeah, probably not, not good for kids. But uh, if you do get your own time, I would watch the film. The reason I mentioned that, uh, that is because it did start out in the theater. Yeah. And then, then the COVID-19, you know, the pandemic really uh, you know, picked and up. And they sold it you know, directly, too. Stopped it. They stopped the theaters. You know, the theaters mm-hmm. all just, all the chains ground to a halt. So then they uh, moved it to the streaming on Amazon. Exactly. And then paid 20 bucks or like, 19 or 15 bucks like you would pay for a movie ticket right then you can see the film um and they have been doing this with uh you know i guess big temp productions yes so that could be the new norm so as i was saying i think uh you know the process has been accelerated Mm. moving out of the movie theaters into streaming yeah more into streaming you know um which is kind of sad, you know. I mean, I grew up watching movies even in a drive-thru. Oh, excuse me, Saturday morning cartoons. What happened? <laughs> I, I don't know. You but know, definitely 2020 is not like when I was grow- growing up in the 80s or the 90s. It's not. Um, but, you know, I mean, technology, uh, as you know, we were talking about Zoom. I mean, it's an amazing technological advance in that sense of what we're doing. In 1980, 1990, we couldn't do this. Oh, you know, definitely. Watching, your, watching a, a show or a movie on your iPhone, can you do yeah. that in 1990? No. Nope. Hell no. So this I is still in, had my brick and beeper. <laughs> yeah, the beeper. I, I, I remember it was at the Wall Street 2 when uh, Gordon Gecko gets out of jail. He's been in jail since what? The first film, which was back in the 80s, right? So, and he goes, the jib, the, you know, he gets his stuff back, right? Once he gets out of jail, he goes, and he goes, and here's your credit card, your wallet, and one cell phone. And this is big, clunky phone, boom. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that's what cell phones were like back in 1986, whenever that film came out. Now it's this iPhone, you know, which is literally a computer, you know, it's a mini computer. Which hey, you can, I- you want. it's amazing. So. Hey, do you remember the Avid machine? The big Avid editing machine? Yeah, I, I remember it. when they were editing on actual film. Yeah, that's what I started. So to have something the size of a refrigerator lying down to work on, costing me a couple thousand dollars to edit, you know, every time I edited, it, it was a couple five hundred dollars here, five hundred dollars there. And now I've gone from that to my computer to being able to edit on my phone by the fly. Yeah. So, technology is getting better, but I hope our creativity catches up with our technology, you know? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's like this. Um, if you look at film history, you know, back in the early 20th century, they were all silent films, right? And I then- still like them. I still like Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone, black and white. Yeah, no, no, that, those were, that was a very good, you're talking about the series back in the 60s, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm talking back like even in the 10s and the 20s, you know, back, you know, 100 years ago. Oh, Silent, wow. Black and white, you know, 16 degrees per second, uh, per, you know, uh, was it per second? Mm-hmm. Um, and then they shifted to talkies with, was it the jazz singer? Was that the film? Where yes. The, the first, you know, person yes. talked back with yes. in 1920. 70s i forgot my own history and then you know so then the technology leaped to sound films and then it leaped back in the you know uh with films like snow white and wizard of oz suddenly it's in color and then color got popular and then you know then it shifted from film to digital and then it shifted from you know like the tv format was it four by three to more cinematic HD. Now HD has gone to 4K, Ultra HD. Yes, speaking you know, you of 4K, 4K, what do you use? Yeah, it's just, it, it's, you know, so technology is always gonna, you know, I guess, you know, it, it's always gonna go forward. And you're right, you have to just adapt with it. So when you shoot like, you know, in 4K resolution or 6K, 
I mean, you're going to see everything. I mean, you're an actor, so you understand this. You're going to see everything, all the nook and cranny details of your face, because that's how good the resolution. So I think as an actor, you got to get used to that, you know, mm -hmm. that people are literally going to be seeing you in really high resolution, you know. With exactly. And I'm sorry, you have to have perfect skin, perfect lighting, and a great and camera. Makeup. Makeup. The makeup artist. You have a really good makeup artist. Yeah. I have another uh, makeup artist coming on my show this week, too. Miss Candice Omeo. And uh, I love her. I just finished editing her reel and putting all of her wonderful stuff together. And I, I talk about great and gruesome. You got to check her out. Well, if she can give me a haircut, because all the barbers are closed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think you look good with it a little long. Oh, thank you. I, I just, yeah. <laughs> look, everything with this COVID thing, you know, this is so surreal. It's like um, out, the movie Outbreak or Contagion. You know, no, contagion. It's a movie. It's a movie. Okay. It could never happen in real life. And now it's happening. You know, the worst thing is, is I, when all this started breaking out, I used to work on Just Shoot Me. And I used to work with this wonderful actor, Rico. And he was the photographer on the, the show. Uh, he was playing the photographer. And he was in <laughs> contagion. And I'm like, as a scientist, and I'm just sitting there going, and he was coming back from working on that and then working with us and just, you could see it affected him. Just working on that, just the topic, you know. It was so realistic. That show, that, that show, that movie, that movie is, is, is it's, it's, it's like a horror film, but it's, it, it's, real, it's realistic. It got to your heart. It really made you freak out inside, it gave you an, it gave me an anxiety attack thinking about that could just happen, you know? Well, then, when Gwyneth Paltrow did what she did in the film, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but, you know, I mean, I, I think you know what I'm talking, talking about. We're talking films, so if we're spoiling it, that's on them that they haven't seen it. Let, let's just say when she uh, did her finale in the hospital, I, it's, it's, I had nightmares because it was so realistic how she... Okay, fine, I'll spoil it. Died. <laughs> but she did that in, in the beginning of the film. Yeah. You know, it was in the beginning of the film. Yeah. And, and that's what made I'm it like, more wow. Fun. You know, I, and I, I mean, now you hear stories of uh, people with, you know, the breathing issues because of COVID and you have to be put on ventilators. I have asthma. So, you know, for me, I'm one of those people that can be more susceptible because I am, you know, I have a pre-existing condition called asthma. So but because you have I, asthma, you already have a lot of your equipment already. I, I have inhalers. Um, I don't you have, have a nebulizer. I have an inhaler. I have inhalers. Come of them is what I take. Um, but yeah, I'm one of those people that you know every year I, I have to get a flu vaccine. You know, it's recommended by my allergist. Even the, there was a year, it's like five, ten years ago, where there was a shortage, at least here in California, and I was in line to get a shot with elderly people. You know, anybody, you know, bef that's under 18 and over 64 or something can get the shot. But any, anybody between 18 and 64, which I am, you couldn't unless you have a pre-existing condition. Pre-existing condition. So, you know, I have to get the vaccine, you know, and so I, I, I don't know. I, I just hope with the COVID thing, they do find one. But I, I don't want the world to become like contagion. I mean, we're already wearing the face masks and the gloves and... So I feel like I'm going to see M Mila Jovovich come out of the corner and the Umbrella Corporation is in charge of um, all of this. And it just, that's how I'm like, are we going to be seeing zombies down by Staples Center? I don't know. That's, <laughs> yeah. That, well, I'm sorry. I, well, I was, I grew up there when um, LA was very bohemian and where the Staples Center is, is by the Garment District. And the garment district was always filled with the homeless. And that's, that's the one thing that I loved about L.A. Because when you're an actor in L.A., you really look for a cause. And I'm a farm girl with a computer. So I'm like, I wanted to help everybody, <laughs> everybody and feed everybody. So 
a lot of the greatest thing is, is I've, I met a lot of other actors that wanted to do these great causes with me, you know. Um, and we went down to uh, the lower end section and did the soup kitchens and all of this stuff, you know. I'm, I'm missing Danny's freaking tacos right now. <laughs> so I think, you know. I think down there they, they had Cantor's. What? Cantor's. Cantor's Cafe. I think it's called Cantor's in downtown Los Angeles in the garment district. There's one down there, yes. I think, yes. I, ooh, what what's that? Those are going back and forth. Wait, and there ghost? Is there a ghost back there? <laughs> uh, well, it's called motorcycles. <laughs> This is the time of day down here when us Arizonians tear up shit. At literally. 7 p.m.? Yes, because it's dusk and it's not hot and it's not cold right now. And everybody on their motorcycles, quads, they go through the washes, they go through down through the deserts, and that's all you hear. <laughs> And then on the other hand, you have the horses on the backside. So it's a little bit of everything. Well, I, it sounds nice. I, I don't know. I just, like I said, when I think of Arizona, I'm thinking the Old West. I always well, think. I'll give you one. Do you, have you ever heard of California Dreaming with Bo mm -hmm. Derrick? Mm -hmm. That was my first film ever. Oh, wow. To be in with Bo Derek. Ah! Nice. And I got to do stunt for the very first time because it was an Italian director and yeah. he told the guy at Old Tucson to go blank himself. He was using a real female for the real female stunt person. And I was just like, wow, I can be a stunt person. And I went on from there. I went from doing, I like riding horses and I do poi and I play with fire. So I'm kind of, I've always, <laughs> wow. yeah, I like fire. Me fire, I like to play with. So, so you like pyrotechnics, okay. Yes, I well, I, I, I do a routine um, where I'm, in a hoodie mask and a um, skeleton thing. I look like a guy and the whole routine is me doing some amazing acrobatic things with poi or fire and a staff stick, very martial arts and, but glowing, you know? I, I, I can only say this about fire. It's, 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 um... It's a beast. It's a beast. And I, I mean that in a beautiful way. Like it in the is. film back there, you know. Um, I, I remember I, when Disneyland was still open, they had that <laughs> show, it was like Fantasmic. And in the finale, the fire, there, there's fires that, you know, and they're, they're on the Tom Sawyer Island, right? And then the, 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 there was like dragons or something, and then they breathed fire. And we're all like far away, right? We're, you know, there, there's like, it's an island, so there's water in between right and even in, with that distance you can feel that fire you can that's why can i have to oil it. my body up long it's a beast so I that's what to, i think about fire you know i have to i have to tie my hair up tight and oil it and i have to oil my skin down because it burns your skin even just by the contact you no, know i bet it, it, would, it would even burn your skin even from a distance i mean it's just fire is so potent and you know uh you know, our, you know, we stare at fire, the sun, the sun. That, that's a big ball of fire, basically. It's a nuclear fusion reaction, right? Yeah. You know, even from the art, you know, from what, we're 93 million miles away from the sun, I think. You know, the funny we thing is, is that you're making the ass of your assassin the sun. I mean, <laughs> it, it, that, that's how potent fire is. It's just a strong. You see, you're all burning up. Just <laughs> I, I just love your background. You know, I'm looking at the background there with the cacti, and then uh, oh, it, it, it either could be it either could be the sun, the sun, the sun is setting, and that's why the the, the hills seem to be on fire, <laughs> or actually, maybe it's actually fire. Actually, I just look, like wait, <laughs> wait. Let me move out of the way. My I took this picture um, 
in the back hills uh, when the sun was setting and it was bouncing off everything. And I have an old antique camera I placed in the middle of it. Hold on. Well, that's the actual photo? Oh. Oh, that's nice. I thought that was like a painting. I made it into a painting. Oh, that's nice. I took a photo and then I ran it through watercolors. In that's Photoshop. nice. That's nice. I thought it was a painting. Huh. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I meant, I, I just hope, you know, things do get back to normal because. <sighs> I know. It's the greatest things, but I'll tell you something. You and a lot of people that work in our industry, my husband, for instance, he, he works up for ESPN and they already are talking about sending him back in when they want to, they want to bring the, the, the sports back. They don't want to bring the audience back. They want to bring the sports back and, gotcha. and the players to be masked and gloved up and as they play. And, um, they Is were that possible? I mean, you're holding a basketball or you're swinging a bat with gloves on like that? I mean, well, yeah, you wear gloves anyway. In well, you wear like gloves that. anyways, but I don't know. But that's what the game, the people with the money, the okay. big guys with the big sticks, they want their football. They want their basketball. Oh, I, I don't doubt it. I, I, I totally agree. And such as that, um, they were talking about a hazmat suit, uh, and he's a sound engineer. So he has his own little world in his own little booth. Yeah. So, but in order for them to go back in that kind of um, hazard, <laughs> yeah, um, ESPN, thank you, Disney, because Disney bought ESPN. They're going to, they are going to take care of their crew and their, their family. I was part of the Disney crew a long time ago, and they are family, and they'll take care of you to the bitter end. And I'm very happy about that. I, I mean, I really, I, I, I hope things do start to reopen. Now, of course, I don't want a resurgence in, you know, coronavirus cases. So I guess we're going to have to do this slowly but surely. I guess the way to do it. You know? I think it's just going to teach us to be more hygienic. <laughs> Period. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I, that does, that could be one good thing that comes out of this. You know, I meant, uh, the, the fact is, the air is cleaner. You know, we see more animals now, and I love animals. You know, uh, animals. I know. Are, That's I, the I one thing we have in common. You send me a lot of great kitty videos. He's got a, cats. Hey, ladies, he's got a great heart. He loves cats. Woo! Love cats. Cats, uh, you know, I... Uh, before the, the, this pandemic, I was seeing uh, my friend Janine, Janine Berryman, who's actually, uh, she took this photo. So she's been on several of my films, um, but she has her uh, kitten Finley, who is now a year. And, you know, I've been visiting Finley, you know, every week or so. Now I can't see him, at least. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, I couldn't even celebrate his birthday. And he turned one and just can't do it, you know, because we're not supposed to, you know. We, I was enjoying those too. <laughs> I, you know, I meant, unfortunately, I, I would love to post more videos of Finley, but. I think it's time you know, for you. I, I think it's time for you to adopt. I think it's time I, for you. Know, to yeah, I mean, I, on my, on my uh, previous shoot, the one Assassin's Apprentice 2, we had a really good actress, Tracy Lee Coco, who was Lieutenant J on Star Trek. She gave me, um, as a memento, a uh, crystal kitty. If I can step away, I can actually show you the kitty. It's in the back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, behind these posters. <laughs> a crystal kitty. So, yes, I don't have a real cat, but I have a crystal kitty. I think it's time to invest. Our governor that did not become our governor and decided to be the CEO of the Humane Society as he says, I'm pushing puppies. I'm a pimp for the puppy. So yeah, that's a good. That's that, you know that's a good good time to be a pimp is for puppies. Or yeah, you know. I have to say he's a really great gentleman, and he's really trying to find good loving homes to all of these 
pets that have been either abandoned or dropped off at the Humane Society because a lot of people got scared to have pets when this oh, went off. And it was yeah, really that's sad. sad. That's sad. And we're all trying to do our part and make things a little bit brighter and a little bit better for, you know, my girlfriends are asking me to do a yoga video. And I'm like going, oh, yes, it'll be called Lila Love Handles Body Excellence. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, I'm a comedian when it comes when it really comes down to it. So I really like making people laugh. So if I made you laugh, I did my job. So <laughs> it, hey, because we did start late, uh, Zoom offered us a little more time on our outline. So we actually are going to be a full hour talking. Oh. So yes, we have three minutes till a full hour. So we did well, it. Can I do some more shameless plugging? Yes, shame me, shame me, full of it. Talk about now, everything. What it oh, is that you asked me, me to do email, this. Uh, Give me some websites to see yeah, stuff. That, that's the shameless plugging. Now you asked me, you asked me to do this, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so my website is Russum Productions, and the website is R U S S E M M as in Mary dot com. So on Russum dot com, you can see links to all these films back here. Um, and that, those include my feature films, uh, PJ, which is now Heaven's Messenger, you can see on Amazon Prime and Tubi TV, uh, Chasing the Green, which is now Big Shots, you can also see on Tubi and also on Amazon Prime. So Big Shots is the name of the film now. Uh, this one, uh, The Legends of Mathia, sorry, there we go. Um, you could purchase it on Amazon and that's my third feature. So Chasing the Green is my second. This is my third occupants, which um, you know has won awards even at Chandler. At Chandler, it, it was oh, that I thank you. Best. Plug yourself from all the wonderful awards you won. You won so many last year. You better mention every single one of them. Yeah. Well, with uh, with occupants, uh, we uh, what started the, the award process for that film was um, Shriekfest. The Shriekfest is a genre of horror festival here in. Los Angeles, and we actually screened at the uh, was it the Rally Studios in the Charles Ch Charles Chaplin screen room. Oh, and yes. we had a we, it was basically like it was a jam packed full of you know when we premiered there, uh, people it was like jam packed, sold out. People were clapping afterwards, and then we won the best sci fi feature film. So because of that, and everything just kept you know it was like a roller coaster, and we kept you know winning and winning and winning, and you know it was, it, occupants was the reason why I'm doing films like Assassin's Apprentice now, American Whisper, Assassin's Apprentice 2. I met people like Paul Hickman because of Occupants. So um, that film you can see on Tubi TV, you could see on uh, Amazon Prime, and again, American Whisper is the latest one. And all this is again on Russum.com. You can go there and see all this. So you, know, you can see that one. Uh, my documentary I did talking about my love of animals. I love, um, I, I used to take walks when I could at the Bolsa Chica Wetlands, which is very near where I live. And uh, that's where I met Janine Berryman, who, you know, I was telling you, she had Finley and she took the photos like this one here for the posters. So and that's also now on Amazon. You can see on Amazon Prime. So I think that's enough shameless plugging, but thank you for allowing me to do that. <laughs> no, I think it's wonderful. Thank you so much, so much for joining us and entertaining like we love to do, you know, for the masses. And we'll do this again. We'll have more to talk to. We and, gotta meet uh, in person time, after this COVID thing's over. And not just that, I'll come up and visit because I have to come up to LA. I actually have several friends that are sick up there and I hope I do get to see them. What, when with I COVID? Do, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's yeah. awful. Uh, we got, I have a couple friends in Sherman Oaks and, um, you know, down off of Ventura too. So it just. Oh, that's awful. I, yeah. I, I hope they're healing. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh. They're trying to, you know, it's just one step yeah. at a time. You know, yeah. I got another one in Los Feliz right now too. So I'm just like going, okay, um, please everybody do what you need to do to get better. And I will come visit when I can, but, yeah. um, you know. Well, I hope I hope they heal. Yeah, so do I. 
And, you know, when we come out of this and we get to go and have fun again, I'm going to take you and me and Chinatown and we're going to go and eat our way through it. Uh, I, I'm, you know what? If you're paying, then I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We go for some dum sum. We just throw it everywhere. Look, I love dim sum. I love I, I, I love Chinese food, so I'll take you up on that offer. <laughs> Definitely. I have some work to do when I come back to LA. But for now, thank you so much, Russell. Oh, thank you. Talk soon. I'll bring thank you back you. on the other panel for the, uh, the rest of the directors. I'm just glad that it was just a one-on-one -on -one with you and me right now, though. Well, this is great. I, I appreciate it. Thank you uh, for having me on this Zoom thing that I've never done before. So this is uh, very, I love it. In fact, I'm going to take a screenshot right now. I just did some. <laughs> I'll post well, that. <laughs> everybody, thank you for joining us at Arizona Wildcraft Entertainment News, where the dreamer has awakened. So thank you very much, and we will talk to you soon. Bye, folks. Okay, I still Are we off? I still think I have you on, but I think we I think are. I think we're still live. Well, we still are still live. live.